Hello everyone, it's the Outcast writer here, uh, having a bit of a different review. I know you saw me uh, do something similar to this with uh, Codename Steam. We're just kind of having a basic, short, little review going on today. Um, the main reason for that is I actually do have a review planned. It's actually based off of a viral video that came out about a month ago, of all things. Yeah, it kind of surprised me too. Didn't even know it existed until about a week ago. But um, it's taking a little extra time, and it's probably, so far for me, probably the most important review video I've made. Not just talking about the ones that I've made these past few weeks, but all my reviews that I've done. There is just a lot to get into, and I'm not going to be able to use it all. I know I'm being very vague, but don't want to spoil anything for you. But yeah, shooting a little bit from the hip here. Uh, looking forward to getting that review completed. The, uh, the writing process is almost done with that review, so it should be ready to go on Thursday. So in the meantime, I'm just going to give my quick, sweet little review on a book called Star Wars. Before the Awakening. Star Wars Before the Awakening is a novel written by Greg Rucka and illustrated by Phil Noto. It is meant to be written for middle graders, but it is still readable enough for even adults to enjoy. To be honest, there are quite a few stylistic choices and how it is written that you can tell that this book is written for a younger fan base, but still, it is an engaging enough read. Star Wars Before the Awakening deals with the stories of the three main characters we are introduced to in Star Wars Episode 7, Finn, Rey, and Poe Dameron. The book is technically categorized as an anthology book, as the book does contain three distinct and separate stories, as it is divided evenly between Finn, Rey, and Poe Dameron, as this is before our three unlikely heroes all meet each other up, which of course doesn't happen until Star Wars Episode Seven. To be very frankly honest, I am surprised how well this book reviewed, not saying that it doesn't deserve it, but this book was getting about four out of five stars for most online marketplaces and uh, review sites. It was kind of a nice surprise to see that something that isn't overly complicated is uh, it could still be very, very solid and a very enjoyable read, which is something I found very much for this book. Before the Awakening starts with Finn, the stormtrooper who turns to the resistance side, almost said rebel side. <laughs> I grew up on the original trilogy, what can I say? And this is the one story out of the three that I really think probably there should have been aspects of it in the movie. Um, it basically describes everything that Finn was going through uh, mentally and emotionally before he made his decision to leave the Empire. I mean, if you take a look at Star Wars Episode Seven, it is one of the few flaws of that movie is that you're kind of like, wait a minute, okay, Finn just, you know, Finn just decided. I mean, for me, when I was watching the film, it didn't really bother me. I, I could see how seeing someone uh, in their first real combat could do that to someone. And while it is Finn's first real combat, that's not really the reason that ultimately changes him. It, it is the tipping point. It is the straw that breaks the camel's back. But as we see in Before the Awakening, there was a lot building up to that moment in Star Wars Episode Seven. Uh, Finn, we get to see him interacting with his squad mates, one of which is rumored to be the uh, stormtrooper that gets shot and leaves the bloody smear on Finn's helmet in Star Wars Episode Seven. We also get a, a bit of interaction with Captain Phasma, which I know a lot of people were looking forward to seeing more involvement with her character in the movie, and that also would have been a, a good way to go in the movie to have given her a little more character, uh, a little more screen time, I should say. Well, both. They, they both work out. So, you know, all in all, uh, Finn's I found to be quite enjoyable. Finn's I found to be the most informative. I felt that it that it set things uh, quite well for Finn's character and that it really benefits the viewing experience knowing this prehistory. 
It also kind of explains how uh, Finn is able to wield a lightsaber because uh, he is proficient in melee. They, there's some scenes of him going through melee training and also just kind of shows that, you know, he isn't some rookie stormtrooper, which it is very easy to get that impression in the movie and that would have been uh, it would have benefited the movie to have gone into that a little bit but this book kind of clears it up so that's good it makes the movie more enjoyable but again if you're not reading the book it's you know it doesn't help the movie at all Ray's I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed her story however I, I didn't feel that it progressed her character definitely not like Finn's I wasn't you know basically it was just kind of Everything we already know about Rey, you know, she's a scavenger, she's uh, very talented at what she does, she's, you know, mistrusting of other people, and, and she's waiting for her family, and she's just trying to find a way to sur- survive. That's uh, basically the themes that Rey's story goes through, and to be perfectly honest, the conclusion of her story was a bit foreseeable, so, um, you know, that, w- that was a bit of a bummer, uh, being able to see that so easily but hey there's only so much you can do sometimes but uh one thing it does uh, really clear up is it shows uh how ray can pilot the millennium falcon so that that was a, a good little important uh tidbit there i i feel that this i with the first two stories i feel that this was kind of a a makeup book for all the legitimate uh questions and queries people had for star wars episode seven uh, so it's good to see that these things are getting addressed. Um, the only real problem with uh, Ray's development and her char- character is that there really is none. Um, it's just we get more time with Ray, which is good. You know, she's a great character. I really, really like her. Um, but it doesn't really, it doesn't make us feel for her more like Finn's story did. And then finally, we have Poe's story. Poe's story, like Ray's story, doesn't really add a whole bunch to their character, not a, a whole new layer or anything like that. However, it does continue, like Ray's story, to uh, validate things that we already know about Poe. Uh, one little nice thing is that we were given a flashback scene with his father, and that kind of gives his uh, impetus for why he wanted to be a fighter pilot. Um, the one other real interesting thing in this story of Poe's is that Poe was actually fighting for the New Republic and not the Resistance. And and, and that was pretty interesting, uh, kind of knowing that. And um, through him disobeying orders, basically, um, that's how he gets to join the Resistance. So his, his story was, it was definitely more action-oriented. Um, Finn's was fairly action oriented too, but it was mostly training simulations, whereas Poe's is actual dog fights going on. So, you know, that is fun and exciting and I appreciate that. Um, however, you know, not a huge amount or really any development of Poe's character. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, it's kind of a bummer seeing Poe and Ray not getting the same character development that Finn did. Um, especially since Finn is the first story, you know, there's a bit perhaps you could say you could get an expectation of, okay, so what new character development things are we going to learn about these folks? And we don't really learn anything new about their character, nothing that really adds depth to their character, just more of kind of like, well, here, now you kind of know these people and where they got the things that they got that you saw in the movie. So if I really had to fault this book is that it's, it's still, uh, it still relies too much upon episode seven to be a really its own unique thing, but it does what it does very well, which is just to give you kind of a, a pre-story to the main event, which is Star Wars episode seven. It's an easy, nice, light read. It is enjoyable. It is well written. You know, children can read it. Teenagers can read it. Adults can read it. It is done very well, so I will tip my hats to them. If you're not expecting a super whole bunch out of this book, you're going to be very, very happy with it, especially if you're a Star Wars fan, Um, and especially if you had some questions and concerns about Star Wars Episode Seven. You know, this book will really help clear some things up, and it it definitely, you know, I would say it has improved my watching experience of Star Wars. So just for that fact alone, I was really glad to get it, but the book is, it's about 240 pages, it's a nice little read, and you don't have to 
pressure yourself or anything. Just take some time and just, you know, just for a little light reading. It was a it was a really fun and good book, and I am glad I took the time to read it. Um, it was actually my second book that I have read so far since uh, Disney has relaunched the Star Wars line, and, you know, I've enjoyed both of them. Um, I, I actually enjoyed this one a bit more because uh, a common complaint I have with Star Wars novels, because I have read some of the old uh, legends, as they now refer to it. I have read some of those books. There always seems to be a feeling that, like, oh, this is a Star Wars book. Like, there's a certain style to it that doesn't feel, like, super authentic writing. I don't know exactly how to turn it, but it's a style of writing that I'm not particularly a fan of. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, this is a Star Wars story. I will admit, this book doesn't have it. I didn't get that feeling at all. So that was a really good and nice uh thing to experience from a book that had Star Wars in its title. So yeah, that's a kind of my impressions of Star Wars before The Awakening. There's no real deeper things to go into, so it's an enjoyable little book, and I would hate to spoil that for you, so go ahead, uh, check it out. It's definitely worth uh, a read and your time. Uh, it might be relatively cheap on Amazon now. It came out last year. Um, I don't know. I, can't, I bought it um, shortly after it came out, so I, you know, like a dumb dumb paid full retail price. But you know, I just it was uh, it was something I wanted to read, so and I don't regret it one bit. So, anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, comment, let me know. Have you read this Star Wars novel? Have you read any of the Star Wars novels? What is your feeling about Disney relaunching the entire expanded universe? I am always up to hear those comments, as uh, you know, I have a particular fire in my belly about those. But, anyways, I hope all of you are having a great and wonderful day. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, doing whatever it is you do to interact with this channel. I greatly appreciate it. And this is the Outcast Writer. Remember, always remember, that what we create matters.